Thank you, Lynette. Um, our last pilot project that we'll be focusing on today uh, really talks about global health project in Uganda. Uh, this is a, a project that's been going on for quite some time under the direction of instructor John Farrick and his uh, student, Yi Jin Yoon. John Farrick is the director of the CALS, College of Ag and Life Sciences International Programs Office and assistant dean in the Division of International Studies. He's been engaged in developing service learning programs at UW-Madison since the mid-1990s and is currently very active in helping to create international service learning opportunities for students, particularly in the sciences. The WWB pilot with the Village Health Project in Uganda began as a Wisconsin Idea Fellowship with a grant from the Mortgage Center back in 2005 and is still being carried on at this present time as this presentation will illustrate. Presenting today will be the student Yi Jin Yoon, Jenna, is from Guizhou, uh, Guan, Guangzhou, Korea. Excuse me, Jenna. Uh, she did her undergraduate studies at UW Madison, majoring in biochemistry, and is currently pursuing her PhD in bio biochemistry at UW Madison. She went to Uganda in 2007 through the Cal Study Abro Abroad program and has been involved in the Village Health Project ever since. After graduation, she intends to pursue a faculty position somewhere at a research university in higher education. Yeah. So VHP started um, by a group of students who went to Uganda as a, as a part of a student, uh, study abroad program. And um, James Natambi, sorry, the pointer is not really great. Um, but James Natambi here um, is a faculty in the Department of Biochemistry and Nutritional Sciences. And John Farrick, who's also in the audience, um, he's involved in the CALS international programs. Oh, I'm going to get a new pointer. Okay, great. Um, so both of them has directed this study abroad program in the past seven years or so, and the students um, were able to learn about international health and nutrition issues in developing countries. And during the trip, the thing that really um, stuck with the students was the fact that most of the people, vast majority of the people in Uganda lack access to clean water. And these pictures actually represent the actual water sources that students were able to visit during their trip. And as you can see, that the water does not look good. <laughs> um, and the, another issue with this is that um, it's mostly children and mothers that go out there to collect water. And on average, they spend about an hour and a half every day collecting this water for their family. And they may do this up to three times a day. So you can imagine they spend several hours just collecting water for their family, whereas they could be spending this, this amount of time and energy for going to school or doing agriculture for their family. So it's a very big issue in this country. So to address this issue, what we wanted to do is take a two-pronged approach. One was to uh, build rainwater collection tanks and second was to provide education on public health and sanitation. And to really tackle this approach, we really needed a close collaboration with two Ugandan um, organizations, and those are Technology for Tomorrow and COBIN. And Technology for Tomorrow basically provides the technical expertise needed for constructing these water tanks. So these tanks are usually built next to a building so that when the rain comes down, the water will be collected through the gutter um, and the pipe system and then go into the uh, tanks so that it will be stored for future uses. And also this other, coll um, our collaborator is Coben, and they already had an existing network of uh, family volunteers who are usually mothers, and they were um, educated by Coben staff members about malnutrition and vaccination and so forth. So we could really work with these existing network of volunteers so that we can make sure that our tanks are properly maintained and also they are properly educa um, educated on sanitation issues. And um, as Nancy mentioned, um, our very beginning was um, funded by the Wisconsin IDA Fellowship through the Mortgage Center, and we're extremely grateful for their support. And without, without them, we, I'm not sure if we would be still staying as an organiz organization today. So this uh, three-way collaboration between Technology for Tomorrow and COBIN and Village Health Project um, really expanded beyond um, the, the rainwater collection tanks. And we 
have expanded into um, several other projects, for example, building um, these clay pots for storing clean water, um, and also um, distributing maca pads. These are menstrual pads um, made with recycled paper and papyrus. Um, and these pads are given out to school-aged girls so that they don't have to miss school during their menstruation periods. Also, we did um, biosend um, filters. So we built these filters with technology for tomorrow so that they can filter their water within their homes. And also recently, um, earlier this year, we sent out two VHP members to the field so that they can critically evaluate the progress of our project and also obtain feedback from the communities. And the very recent project that we are um, now launching on is at Lueza Primary School. And here our goal is to develop a sustainable lunch program at the school. So this is the current structure of their kitchen and it's not very uh, appropriate for feeding over 700 students at their school. So what our goal is to build um, piggery at the school and also expand their existing school garden so that they can have a sustainable lunch program. We're also planning to finish the construction of two classrooms at the school so that they don't have to sit outside um, during the rain, <laughs> during their class. And also we're going to collaborate again with the Cal um, Study Abroad program so that when the students go over there, um, they can do their service learning by interacting with these students and also providing um, workshops um, to educate on healthy eating, nutrition, and sanitation. So with that, I would like to acknowledge um, our Cobin staff members. Um, they're down here. This is P Patrick, Lillian, and Dan. And Dr. John Kachitai is the founder and the director of Cobin. Um, and Technology for Tomorrow, uh, Paul Kimera is an engineer that we work with. Um, and Dr. Moses Muzazi is, um, is actually father of Paul Kimera, and they had just been great father-son uh, father team um, working on a lot of different engineering projects in Uganda. And also Ronald and Imelda, whose pictures are not shown here, they're going to be leading um, our uh, projects in Lueza this year. And also I'd like to thank the Mortgage Center for providing all of the support. Um, we have actually have received five um, Wisconsin IDEA fellowships um, in consecutive years. So we're very proud of that and we're very grateful for the support. And we've received a um, number of funding from Rotary International as well. Thank you. Well, we're doing great on time and I'm gonna ask John Farrick to come up to the table and join us. Uh, what I'd like to do now to close out the session is to have a chance for you to ask the students and the mentors questions about their work, uh, perceptions, things that they've learned, maybe perhaps reflect on some of the most impactful things that they've had. And uh, we've got about 15 <laughs> minutes and we're in great shape. So uh, I'd like to open up the floor and, and if I don't hear questions then uh, I think I can ask one to start people off. So uh, what would you like to know from these students who have worked so hard with their faculty mentors to make an impact on the local communities? <laughs> 